Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Welcome, everybody. Kevin Jackson. Here's the Kevin Jackson Show. The Grammys were on the other night, and people have sent me a note. Kevin, why do you talk about the Grammys? Why? Why would I talk about the Grammys? You guys know how I feel about these stupid award, award shows. Oh, you know, you sing so good. You sing better than this person, and this song was better than this person, and this song spoke to me in these ways, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You're great. I'm great. We're all great. Multi millions of dollars spent on a bunch of wealthy people celebrating their jobs. Think about, you know, I mean, I, whatever the biggest celebration is in the real world. Your company throws a party to, to you know, to, to honor the top salespeople or you had a great year or whatever. And I'm telling you, I, I've been to some pretty lavish ones and they pale in comparison to anything involving entertainment. Entertainment. OK, to put it in perspective, I heard the swag bags for the Grammys were thirty thousand dollars a piece. I have never in my life heard of a, do you know what a swag bag, a swag bag is with everybody who comes to the Grammys or, you know, I don't know, maybe that's just the celebrities or the winners or whatever, but in the back they have swag bags. So I was at an event just recently and they, they gave us swag bags for the speakers. And I, and to be honest with you, I'm not exactly sure who was, it was a VIP tied to an event and at the VIP event they gave us swag bags let me tell you what was in the swag bag it was a couple of bars of candy cement if the swag bag cost three dollars I'd be shocked three bucks and let me tell you the place where they had that this event was at a person's house who was probably worth $50 50 million dollars the house was at least four million dollars at least and it was I mean it was a bit it was a relatively big event I'm gonna go out on a limb the swag bag was five bucks y'all are looking at me like I'm crazy like come on the swag bag it, it was a assorted pastries and um you know it had a just I mean it, to be honest it was so uneventful I don't remember everything that was in it it had a pastry. It had a couple of bars to cut candy that you could buy at any store. I remember one of the candy bars was a hundred thousand dollar bar. Maybe that's what they wanted me to think, but it was only worth about ten cents. <laughs> it was a hundred thousand dollar bar because I happened to like those candies when I was a kid. But that was it. And then you know all the reports are, oh, the Grammys they just beat up on you know Donald Trump, and then they had Hillary Clinton on there, and she read fake news. What? Look, it, I, again. If you really believe, this is all great news. This is all great news. And you're saying to me, Kevin, what are you talking about? This is great news. I'm telling you, it's great news. Every one of those suckers is going to have to eat crow. Every one of them. They continue to say, let's bring Hillary in. Let's bring Hillary in as if that adds some credibility to that crook. That lady is going down this year. The FBI is going down this year. Every one of those artists that you're listening to, they are losing money. And I mean, let me tell you, if it weren't for Bruno Mars, I don't think I would even listen to the radio. There's maybe two artists that I hear on the radio and I go, oh, I like that song. You are the same way. Now, you are you may be, oh, Kevin, my kids listen to, I get it. Kids listen to music. That's what they do. It's, it becomes part of peer pressure to say, do you know the lyrics to this song? Do you? What about this beat? Oh, I like her. I like him. They're under that peer pressure. But I'm telling you, the music industry is killing itself. These artists are, aren't making any money. They got Spotify, Pandora, all these things. They're losing money. Every one of them. They go on tour. They lose money. They're losing money and they're losing clout because you know what? You are beginning to figure out, and so is the rest of the world, that just because you have a melodic voice, people are not going to pay much attention to you. Jay-Z, he goes on Van Jones' show, and we'll talk more about this, and he decides he's going to give his opinions about President Trump. Jay-Z, if you know any history of Jay-Z, you'll find that ridiculous for them to even be bringing him in to talk about a subject like this and it shows me what van jones is trying to do and i'll get to all that in just a second but if the back to the grammys the grammys mean nothing they should mean nothing 
Oh, you know, Kevin, they, they were talking about, again, whatever they said about Donald Trump, be happy about it. Be happy. They don't speak. That group of elites that spent more money on a dress or getting their hair styled or renting jewelry or renting limos and private jets or whatever it is that they got there, that group of people is so out of touch with everyday America, they don't matter. And they hate that. Why do you think they attack Trump the way that they do? I'm just going to give you a second to think about it. It's a really easy answer. Why do you think they do that? For ratings. Ask yourself this. If they don't attack Donald Trump, are we talking about him? Nope. You wouldn't even know that Hillary Clinton did her little thing. You would. I can't. All I I read. uh, I didn't even. It was a, a, a title. And it said Bruno Mars album. And that's all I saw. Does, you know, something like Bruno Mars rocks with album at Grammys or something like that. So I figure Bruno Mars must have won a lot at the Grammys. And you know what? Rightfully so. Now, from what I'm told, Bruno's a Democrat. I don't know if Bruno's a Democrat. I, I hear Bruno is a leftist. Surprise, surprise. They all are. You know, and, and he'd be better off keeping his mouth shut. But let me tell you, his music is that good. I've listened to it. Talented guy. And he's going to be making, I was trying to figure out, the guy probably makes $50,000 a day. You can't turn on your radio without hearing three Bruno Mars songs in an hour. And good for him. But keep his mouth, he needs to keep his mouth shut. And eventually, folks, what's happening right now, these Grammy winners, these singers and artists, etc., they are going to start shutting their mouths. And I promise you, the minute that it begins to happen, when you see the next Grammys and they're not talking about Donald Trump, you watch the next Oscars and they're not saying anything bad about Donald Trump. And by the way, you're going to hear it leading up to that. A lot of the people who talk smack about Trump, Eminem, uh, Snoop Dogg and the others, they will no longer be talking smack about your president, the president of the United States. That will be your sign. Because it's going to be the kiss of death. Nobody cares what these people have to say. I promise you they don't. Anyway, we got a lot to talk about. So I'm glad you're listening to the Kevin Jackson Show. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS or state? The secret to avoiding the IRS nightmare is to seek professional representation. My friends at Security Tax Associates provide the most cost-effective and ethical representation in the industry while helping to avoid seizures, levies, and wage garnishments. Security Tax Associates is here to ensure that the appropriate steps are taken to permanently eliminate any possibility of future tax burdens once and for all. For a free, no-obligation consultation, contact Security Tax Associates, 844-779-4177. That's 844-779-4177. 844-779-4177. Or visit them at securitytaxassociates.com. Beth Cook Moranville author of Closer Than Your Breath, A Book of Hope. Hope, that wonderful, wonderful four-letter word that you may feel completely out of. I wrote this book to give you great hope. It's not too late. If fetal position is an all-too-familiar place for you, I understand. If the next 60 seconds are too long, this book is for you. Wherever you are right now, whether you're dealing with divorce or death or sickness, take hope. You are going to make it through this pain. Don't roll your eyes. I've walked this road and I know it. The best is yet to come. Closer Than Your Breath, a book of hope from author and speaker Beth Cook Moranville can be found on Amazon.com or Kindle.com. For more information, visit CloserThanYourBreath.com or on Facebook at Closer Than Your Breath. Kevin J. 
Jackson Radio Show. All right, everybody, welcome back. Kevin Jackson here, soon to be movie man Kevin Jackson. Go check out bleedingbluemovie.com. Donate if you can. There are ways to donate um, without... Uh, you know, getting a tax deduction and there are days to, the ways to donate. I'm going to get this out. I promise you there are ways to donate where you can get a tax deduction either way. So, uh, and it, look, if you're going to donate 10, 20 bucks, do it non-taxable because it's a hassle for me to get the money out of trust. If you donate into our tax and our, our charitable trust, but if you're going to donate 10 grand, a hundred grand, something like that, then donate it through, to the trust and we're all good. Anyway, um, so I was talking about this fool by the name of Jay-Z, and I I swear to you guys, I have nothing against this guy. You know what's funny about Jay-Z? You take Jay-Z's money away, he's not married to Beyonce. I mean, he's not married to a woman, and and I don't think Beyonce is that hot, but he's not married to a woman anywhere near that hot. That's one of the ugliest dudes on the planet, and and I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just being honest. He's, He's not an attractive dude. And he's, his story is that he was a, a thug on the street and he shot his own brother. Now, look, I, I don't know whether that's a true story or not. I really don't. I don't believe it. I believe half these dudes that make up these stories about how bad they are, are just a, they're the biggest pansies on the block, especially if they don't have a gun. They're pansies. And let me tell you, I know this to be true because as a martial artist, I have checked many of them. You know, they're used to people being, a, you know, they say, oh, man, you better watch out. You come over to the hood. Oh, man, I live in the hood. I, where, where do you want to meet me? And then suddenly they're backing down. Or in, in, in few cases, I mean, I'm sad to admit in my youth, I didn't just check them. I mean, I actually, you know, put them down. And I, I know these guys. They're nothing, but they're just bravado, a bunch of talk. And I think Jay-Z is one of these guys. These look, you got to understand the mentality of these people. They want to do things so that they can get, you know, elevated quickly. So my suspicion is Jay-Z called his brother and said, hey, man, you know, say I tried to kill you and then, you know, I'll get a record. And and so I think he's got a record for having done something, you know, some violence like, like a record. He probably did deal drugs. But I mean, come on, big deal. I mean, I don't know what the percentage is, but a, a fairly good, a fairly significant number of young black men have dealt drugs. I told you guys a story of my nephew. He used to run drugs from uh, Kansas City up to Arkansas to Tulsa. And he did it. He doesn't have a record because he luckily he never got caught, but he shot his best friend. I can promise you he did. He has been shot at multiple times, never hit but shot at. So look, th- th- you can't tell me a story that's going to be any better than my ne- my nephew's story. He's a drug dealer and he's a thug. I mean, he's not anymore, but when he was doing it, he was a straight up thug who would have killed you. So Jay-Z and these guys, 50 cent, I got shot here. I've been shot. Here, I've been stabbed here. I don't, most of it, I don't even believe. I'll be honest with you. And I think Jay-Z's that way. I was talking to my brother. I said, man, if, if I wanted to elevate myself, <laughs> I'd call my brother Kirk. I said, hey, man, look, if anybody asks, I tried to kill you in your sleep three times, okay? And my brother would be, all right, whatever. And then the media would be, yeah, man, my bro- I woke up one night and my brother had my pillow over my head because I had narked on him. He was doing a drug deal or whatever. We could, make a- we could fabricate anything you want to make ourselves look better. And, and, you know, in the eyes of the, I mean, if that would make me look better, I would hope if y'all found out I tried to kill my brother, y'all would be like, what, Kevin, what was wrong with you? Were you on drugs? Nah, man, I was just, just a bad, you know, what's for sad. I, honestly, if people, even in the conservative movement found out that I had made that kind of a transition, they would be like, well, Kevin, we're just glad you're okay now. And I, I love you guys for that. But look, w- these, these conversions don't mean anything to me. Jay-Z is supposedly a street drug dealer who tried to kill his brother, and now he's a rapper, and people want to hear what he has to say. Have you listened to this clown? He talks about oppression in America while wearing a Che Che Guevara, or I think it was Che, yeah, Che Guevara t-shirt, a dude who hated black people, thought black people were the stupidest people on the planet, said black people were lazy, 
ignorant. Well, uh, being honest, black leftist Che kind of le- he kind of got it. He he was, he was on the money about them. But you can't tell me black people in general are what Che Guevara was. That's the very thing that people like myself, Star Parker, Allen West, and many others try to correct is this idea that black people are stupid. We're not stupid. We're no more stupid than any other culture. We have just as many geniuses per capita, just as many athletes per capita, you name it, as any other race. God gave every group on the planet the same distribution of genius and and dummies. He did. And the only difference is black people refuse to find their geniuses. Or they call geniuses like Jay-Z is a genius. Kanye West is a genius. These people are idiots. And Jay-Z is talking about President Trump's reference to Haiti and El Salvador and these African countries supposedly having called them crap hole countries. And he says, it was disappointing and hurtful. It was disappointing and hurtful. It really is hurtful. This is a guy who wrote lyrics, give my ladies, and I'm going to say, I'm going to clean it up. Give my ladies penis, my young, uh, I'm going to clean this up too, prostitutes pee pee, hits in a row like MJ hee hee. That is a lyric from a Jay Z song. Give my ladies, mm-mm, my young mm, pee pee, hits in a row like MJ hee hee. That's genius. I'm sorry, that ain't genius. That's stupid. And they asked Jay Z, you know, oh, it was so hurtful. Have you li- look? I'm, I gave you just a stupid lyric. This is a dude that calls black women, most women, period. Uh, okay, how can I clean this up? Witches and bros. Okay, you get what I'm saying, right? He calls them everything derogatory you could possibly call him. Tells you what he does to him, how he does it to him. Essentially, it dehumanizes. The female population, then he wants to say, what, what, what Donald Trump says, very hurtful. It's hurtful. Sounding like the rapping Mike Tyson. It's ludicrous. It's very ludicrous. <laughs> to, and, and what's sad, it, it, look, I don't know how many people take him seriously, but if Van Jones believes that he's going to get clowns like Jay Z on his show and that's going to give his show some sort of credibility, that's going to be the bridge between pop culture and politics, good luck with that. Because let me tell you what's happening, folks. Nobody cares about Jay-Z. Nobody cares about who's uh, Katy Perry. Nobody cares about Beyonce's politics. She can X all she wants at the Super Bowl. If she believes and if these people believe that America is going to pay attention to that, they have miscalculated. You know how they got popular? They hung out with a fake president who gave them some sort of credibility that they are politically in the know when they're not. Let me tell you what they are, people, listening to The Kevin Jackson Show. By the way, you can call us at 844-551-8255. They are racist, black racist, ethnocentric racist who want to divide this country and make you believe that a community organizer, an idiot, is better than a self-made billionaire. And you better not fall for it. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Let's just say I'm offended, everybody. Kevin Jackson, here's the Kevin Jackson Show. KJRadio.com. I'm offended. I'm mad. Oh, yeah. No, I'm. Uh, there's no other description of this. I'm mad. I'm mad at Mark Wahlberg, and I'll tell you why. Mark Wahlberg donated his money in the name of Michelle Williams, his co-star, in a film called, uh, I forget the name, what was it like? Uh, Rich, All the Money in the World. So he's donated his money. They had to do a, re- a reshoot. And Mark Wahlberg got paid $1.5 million to do the reshoot. And the female co-star in the film got paid a, a lot less. So the way this story reads, it says, Bowing to an outcry over the wage disparity of the reshoots of all the money in the world, Mark Wahlberg and his agency, William Morris Endeavor, have agreed to donate $2 million to Time's Up to combat harassment 
and pay inequities in Hollywood. And here's what Wahlberg says. Over the last few days, my reshoot fee for all the money in the world has become an important topic of conversation. I 100% support the fight for fair pay, and I'm donating the $1.5 million to Time Up's legal defense fund in Michelle Williams' name. Now, let me just explain. So when you have to reshoot a movie, they call these guys in, and I don't know why they did it, but they said, oh, geez, we screwed up. So they do a reshoot. Mark Wahlberg gets a $1.5 million. It's a negotiated thing. His people went and said, here's what we want to do. Now, here's what it, uh, William Morris said. The current com- – I'm going to finish that that thought in a second, but it says uh, – because they donated $500,000, William Morris. But they said the current conversation is a reminder to us in a position of influence have a responsibility to challenge inequities, including the gender wage gap. This is what gets me about this. Say with me, folks. In recognition of the pay discrepancies on all the money in the world reshoots, WME is donating an additional $500,000 to this legal defense fund following our million-dollar pledge to the organization earlier this month. So this Time's Up nonsense has gotten millions of dollars donated over nothing. Now, here's what I want you to understand about this, because I don't want you to think, oh, Kevin's just being a mean-spirited male. But in response to the news, Williams said in a statement given to the Hollywood Hollywood Reporter that today isn't about me. My fellow actresses stood by me, stood up for me. My activist friends taught me to use my voice and the most powerful men in charge. They listened and they acted. If we truly envision an equal world, it takes an equal effort and sacrifice. Today is one of the most indelible days in my life because of Mark Wahlberg, WME. and and Let me just lavish praise on all these eunuchs that rolled over on the so-called women's movement. Now, here's what this hoopla is all about. USA reported they they went into Wahlberg's business and they said, oh, wow, he got one point five million dollars beyond his original salary. His co-star Williams was given nothing but a per diem of a thousand dollars. The dramatic differences triggered an outcry. So this is what the dramatic difference. Oh, we're mad. Look at what they gave that man. Okay, so here's what I'd say. Are they both represented by agents? Yeah. Mark Wahlberg's got William Morris. Michelle Williams has somebody else. Her agent negotiated a thousand dollars. If and and what's funny about it is they say they they went to her and they said it was critical. Her scene is critical to the movie. We've got to have you do it. If you're an actress in Hollywood and your scene is critical to a movie, and and they're going to give you a thousand bucks to do it. You're you should be. <laughs> really? That's all I can say. I ain't going to tell them she should be beat. Anyway, here's what uh, uh, they, they talk about this. Jessica Chastain, who has emerged as a leading activist for the cause of women's equality and who was among the first to publicize the disparity, tweeted, please go see Michelle's performance and all the women in the world. She's a brilliant Get this Oscar nominated Golden Globe winning actress. They always got to give you all the crap, you know, stuff that they have. She's been in the industry for 20 years. She deserves more than one percent of her male co-star's salary. Amber Tamblyn quickly responded via Twitter. Michelle Williams was paid one percent of her male co-star in her latest film. This is totally unacceptable. You're doggone right it is. Who are you going to blame? You're going to blame the people that says, hey, we'll give you a thousand dollars. Or are you going to blame your agent who says, you must be out of your freaking mind. We ain't taking no thousand dollars. Judd Apatow, another Hollywood eunuch. He says, this is so messed up that it's almost hard to believe. Almost. This is how this business works. I wonder if the studio or Mark Wahlberg would do something to make this situation less insane. Actress Sophia Bush tweeted, exposing the gross disparity in pay and hard is hard evidence of the gender gap. Think about what we're talking about here, folks. We're talking about a a chick that was going to go make a thousand dollars in a day. A dude who made one point five million dollars for his reshoot. Now, let me ask you this. How much money do you make in a day? Do you make three hundred and sixty five thousand dollars a year? Uh, What did Michelle? What's her face? Michelle Williams get paid for the movie. Half a million dollars. I don't know. But I I guarantee you, it was more than you're going to make in years. And because she's going to make $1,000 a day, no fault of the people who make the film, because they're going to give you an offer. 
Now it's it's all about women's rights and how d- the disparities are. Somebody found out what Wahlberg got in his negotiation and decided to make it a cause of women. See, this is where I have my problem. Oh, my goodness. And then get this. And this is this is the funny part of it. Exposing the gross disparity and pay and pay in hard evidence of the gender gap negotiated by the same agents, no less. Isn't a witch hunt. It's a demand for fair practices. So now we find out while WME donates five hundred thousand dollars, the same people have negotiated for Wahlberg negotiated for her. If I were her, I'd sue them. That's who I'd, I I wouldn't be making it a feminist. I would say, look, you got my co-star one point five million dollars and you got me a thousand dollars. You're fired and I'm suing you. Why does this have to become a gender issue? They said uh, when all the money director Ridley Scott made the unprecedented de- uh, decision to reshoot in the wake of allegations of sexual assault leveled against Spacey in November, he and his team had to move quickly since the film's scheduled release was just one month away. While Scott needed both Williams, uh, who plays Gail Harris, the mother of the kidnapped victim John Paul Getty III, and Wahlberg, who plays a former CIA operative who becomes involved in the attempts to secure the boy's release, Williams apparently agreed to return without making any additional salary requests, while Wahlberg demanded further compensation. I go back to what I said originally. If you don't ask for it, why do you expect somebody else to give it to you? Now, I, I, whether w, WME gets paid uh, a fee on what they make for these people. So why they wouldn't go to bat for her? I don't know. But maybe she just put her foot in her mouth and said, well, you know, if it's for the betterment of the film, now I'll ask you this before we get too much farther afield and I'll forget about it. Do you even know who this chick is? Do you know who Michelle Williams is? She spent 20 years in the industry. She is a, uh, what did they say she was? She's a Golden Globe, Oscar nominated, Golden Globe winning actress who's been in the industry for 20 years. And I promise you, if you put a gun to my head and say, Kevin, who's Michelle Williams? Pick her out in this lineup of six women. And you gave me four black women and two white women. I still probably would miss it. I don't know who Michelle Williams is. I'd probably pick one of the black chicks because she look. That's a black chick's name, ain't it? Unbelievable. So they're blaming that I wouldn't have donated a nickel. I would have said, you ain't getting a nickel of my money. I got nothing to do with this. I asked for this because I deserve it. If that chick don't want to ask for what she thinks she deserves, shame on her. See, this is one of these things that has nothing to do with gender, nothing to do with this industry. And this is, do you hear anybody talking about this? You're not going to hear a network cover this, including Fox, because nobody wants to cover the idea that this chick didn't have the balls, pardon my French, to go in there and say, I'm not doing that reshoot unless I get some decent dollars. It's that simple. Oh, man. Imperative Entertainment financed the film. They put up an additional $10 million for the reshoot. Sony, which is distributing, was not involved in the negotiations to bring the cast back. You know, hey, maybe she should have sued Spacey. He's the reason why they had to do the reshoot. Wahlberg had agreed to take about 80% of his usual quote, which is in the 15 million range, to appear in the film. In Hollywood's particular calculus, while Williams has an impressive resume, having earned four Oscar nominations, Wahlberg is considered the bigger box office draw. That was the point I was going to make. Who would you rather see? Do you know Michelle Williams? Would you go, Michelle Williams is starring in who? Who's it got in it? <laughs> is Denzel in it? Because if it isn't, I don't even think about it. Michelle Williams is going to be in a film. I, oh, I got to go see that, said nobody ever except her family. He's a bigger box office draw, period. They know this. To make this, and this is one of these these false you know, the flags of feminism that wants you to believe that some big inequity has occurred when nothing has occurred of the sort. Could have been a dude reshooting. He would have got a thousand dollars. Kevin Jackson on the Black Sphere Radio Network. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS or state? The secret to avoiding the IRS nightmare is to seek professional representation. 
My friends at Security Tax Associates provide the most cost-effective and ethical representation in the industry while helping to avoid seizures, levies, and wage garnishments. Security Tax Associates is here to ensure that the appropriate steps are taken to permanently eliminate any possibility of future tax burdens once and for all. For a free, no-obligation consultation, contact Security Tax Associates, 844-779-4177. That's 844-779-4177. 844-779-4177 or visit them at securitytaxassociates.com. to identity politics. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. All right, everybody. Welcome back. Kevin Jackson here. 844-551-8255. If you find the McCabe text, call us. <laughs> oh, the Kevin Jackson Show. KJRadio.com. Now the FBI's got a new claim. They, they, look, talk about a credibility problem. Wow. Credibility. When I used to hear FBI as a kid, I was like, ooh, the FBI's on it. It was one thing for local law enforcement to be on it, right? It's a whole other to go, the FBI's on it. Ooh. You knew they were the they were the fair ones, right? They were the ones that went into Mississippi with Mississippi burning and found out who killed those kids. Those freedom workers, you know, those people that were trying to help blacks and and other folks down in Mississippi who got hung or something, right? Killed. They didn't get hung, but they got killed. The FBI got sent in. You were like, oh, the G-men. You're going to get to the bottom of it. Yeah. But soon this agency is going to get the moniker of fake law enforcement. Because on the heels of the missing text from Peter Strzok and his FBI mistress, Lisa Page, the Bureau now claims they can't find text messages from the deputy FBI director, Andrew McCabe. Now, the missing ones of Peter Strzok and Lisa uh, Page have suddenly been found because of a freedom of information uh, uh, request from Tom Fitton's group, Judicial Watch. They found they showed up. Uh Uh-oh, we do have them. Same thing that happened with Hillary Clinton. The FBI is giving up nothing. It's crazy. Tom Fidna, he said, we sued back in September for the text messages of the number two at the FBI, Andrew McCabe. And they told us this week. They gave every gave us everything they're going to give us and not one text message was turned over. They lost all of Andrew McCabe's text messages. I don't believe it. There's still gamesmanship going on. This is what Fitton said on Judge Janine. Now, I was with Fitton at an event. I think I told you guys this. And he revealed a startling fact. He said that he had sued the Trump administration more in one year than he sued the Obama administration in eight years. And I got to tell you, I was stunned. There was so much to sue the Obama administration over that, I mean, I can't even see straight. Benghazi, Fast and Furious, IRS, VA, I mean, just to name a few, where we're still wanting to get to the bottom of it. And Fitton goes, yeah, I sued on all that. But I've sued the Trump administration more than I've sued the Obama administration, more in a single year. Now, keep in mind, Obama didn't have a lot to be sued in the first four years because it was mostly just, you know, Obamacare crap. But I in the audience, we were stunned. And uh, it proved to me that the legacy Obama minions that remain entrenched in the Trump administration are thick as thieves. And this is part of what they call the deep state. And I'm going to do an in-depth thing on the deep state because of, so the deep state, and we, I talked about this the other day, the deep state are the people who are unelected, but who really have a lot to do with government. They're unelected bureaucrats 
appointed by other people, but they carry a lot of power and you can't get rid of them. So remember that consumer, uh, I think they call it CSP or consumer protection thing. It was set up by Democrats and they put a person over it and that uh, that was untouchable, more powerful than the president. This person could say, oh, no, this this company is not following uh, green energy guidelines or whatever. It, they were making just making stuff up. And President Trump dumped them. Well, his his uh, uh, whoever is over the thing, he dumped them. He says, nope, that guy's gone. It was a big stink over it because President Trump appointed somebody else over that group. And and it's a huge deal. That group should not exist just for the record. This is not a President Trump. I'm glad he dumped the person that was in there because it was an Obama appointee who was just raising pure hell with with all the various corporations. They practically shut down the coal industry and I could go on. But now, oh, and and, uh, they they did something that what was the other thing they did was really uh, it was amazing. And I can't recall. God, I wish I did. But it, it had something to do with. You know, like women's rights or gay rights in companies or something. It was ridiculous. It was costing millions and millions, billions overall. uh, And it was nonsense legislation. And so President Trump says, no, you're out. This person's out. I'm putting my person in. And that person has begun to dismantle all these rules and regulations that were put in. But here's the thing. We don't need that group. It's an unelected bureaucrat that's doing things inside of our government. I don't, I want you, if you don't get anything more out of this conversation than this, you cannot have somebody who can arbitrarily make decisions that impact your life. And you have zero ability to affect their, the outcome. You, you know, if, if, if they have me for all intents and purposes, that person is, is like the president. They're running the country in that aspect of things. They have to have accountability. It can't be some handpicked bureaucrat. And that's why I talked about this uh, redistricting. All these redistricting committees that are being set up by governors around the country should not exist. A redistricting committee must be people appoint uh, who are responsible, uh, you know, who are accountable, I should say, to the people, to their constituents, because they, they need to be able to be voted out. This redistricting is killing us and it's going to kill us in elections to come. We are supposedly in control of the government. In terms of conservatives, if you look at the number of seats we've won, the number of legislative houses and things like this, and we don't control government at all. Anyway, I want to go back to this. So Fitton said he sued the Trump administration more in one year than he sued Obama. And here's what I, I guess the bigger point is, you know, Donald Trump wants everything out. He's not guilty. He's not stopping this stuff. So. When does he get involved at that level? Look, I'm not trying to get the president in the minutia. He's got a big job ahead of him. But he wants this to end. And so why is it not ending? Given the amount of cover being provided by the deep state, I wonder what do the text of McCabe contain? Don't you? Now, the FBI had warned McCabe of his conflict of interest uh, when they, this was uh, they revealed to him on uh, April 29th of 2015 that as the assistant director in charge of the FBI, the, well, he was, I think he was at the Washington field office at the time. They said, your wife being a big time Hillary Clinton supporter and, you know, you you got to be aware of this. So they send out what's called a protocol regarding potential conflicts of interest. It's a document they send to anybody in the FBI that may have a conflict and it identifies areas where you may be in conflict. And they recommended to him disassociation would be important. You know, you need to disassociate from your wife's campaign completely. This was proactive bureau saying to McCabe, in order to avoid any you know, feeling of impropriety, you need to do this. They sent this to him. But McCabe, he ignored it. And there's a reason why he ignored it. He needed to be in the middle of this Hillary Clinton investigation. And I'm going to tell you something. When you look back on the protocol that the FBI used for Hillary Clinton, 
no recordings of her conversations, no notes, no nothing. It it was as if they brought her in there. They said, okay, here's where we are, Ms. Clinton, Secretary Clinton. And the, here's the lay of the land. We're not going to record this. We're going to kind of coach you through it. We, we have nothing. We have no videotape, no audio tape evidence, nothing to even know what was asked of Hillary Clinton. And now we get all these different things that we know they were guilty of that the FBI ignored. This is scandalous. I mean, to say the least, God, unbelievable. So we don't know what McCabe's text messages are. The FBI says, well, we don't have, them." what do you mean? You don't have them. Do you have text messages of any of your employees? Well, yeah. Then why wouldn't you have those? This reeks because, you know, when you think about that exchange between Strzok and Page that showed collusion against Trump and they said they were in McCabe's office. So no wonder the FBI wants to hide evidence. Who knows what these deep state swamp rats are doing to this evidence? You know, and meanwhile, the left decry the attacks on this formerly venerable organization known as the FBI. And then the FBI is ridiculed today, folks, and rightfully so. And we're going to know soon the depths to which this crooked organization was willing to go to sabotage Donald Trump, more so America. And amazingly, Andrew McCabe wants to linger at the FBI long enough to get a pension. He won't stop until he's the top rated radio talk show host in America. What kind of weird competitive freak are you? This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Welcome everybody, Kevin Jackson here. Glad you're with me, folks. Maxine Waters, Mad Max we call her. She's going to be giving the rebuttal at the State of the Union. We got a ton to talk about, but that's what I want to focus on right now. Maxine Waters, James Brown. Yeah, hey, does it feel good? Yeah, do it sound good? Yeah, then it must be good. Hit it. Man, if Maxine Waters gave the State of the Union and came out in a glitter outfit and to the tune of some James Brown, man, I I might even vote Democrat. (laughs) No, I wouldn't do that. But I would come close because that would be hysterical. Hey, baby, 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 baby. Maxine Waters is going to give this. Okay, so Donald Trump, by the way, who practically gave a State of the Union in Davos, Switzerland. If you saw that, that performance by the president, man, it was awesome. Awesome. He practically gave, I'm just telling you, he did. It was like, you know, America's doing this and America's growth. We've got great GDP. We're doing that. And then it was like, wow, 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 wow. I mean, every time you turn around, it was just more and more better news. Exciting. So, you know, there's no, there are no surprises in the State of the Union. The only thing that the president could talk about in the State of the Union is getting into the swamp, you know, getting rid of some of these swamp creatures. There's all these investigations. He could say things like soon the FBI investigation is going to wind down. It's going to go back and point its finger at the very people who requested the investigation. I predicted it. I did nothing. We've been forthcoming. We've released 1.4 million emails, text messages, blah, blah, blah. I saw something like that. It was 1.4 million or something. They've been you couldn't be more forthcoming than Trump. Accessible. Yeah, what do we need? Who do you want to talk to? When I would do management consulting, I knew the companies who were going to really be able to get turned around. You want to know how? Because the when you would say, all right, so these are the areas we're going to need to cover in order to get to the bottom of what's going on with your company, you know, why you're you know, not getting the operational efficiencies you want or what have you. I'm going to need access to dun, 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 these executives, whatever. Uh, we're going to be out here for the better part of three months or whatever you know, time limit, and, and I'm going to need all your executive team involved. And you know what the, the CEO would say? They're at your disposal. Absolutely. Now, that was, it's easy because he, you know, he, his butt's on the line. But what about the people? You know, the, the CFO, the COO, the corporate marketing, etc. What about them? Well, did you get pushback? 
Because, see, if you get pushed back from them, you knew, okay, mm-hmm, yeah, you're my problem. You're one of my areas. But when they would say, hey, fully cooperative, we got to, we want to be better. It, Kevin, if you know something that you can impart that's going to make my life more efficient and better, I'm all ears. Because, see, consultants are, we're not the enemy. We're the enemy if you're doing a crappy job and you're trying to hide, then we're kind of the enemy. Like if you don't, if you don't really need your position, <laughs> your position, then yeah, we could be considered the enemy because we're going to let your, your uh, company know, you know, you're being redundant here, but that doesn't mean you have to leave. You be just because there's a redundancy doesn't mean there's a place, not a place for you. Now, if you're that redundancy, you knew about it and you were complicit, then yeah, you're going to be in some trouble. But generally speaking, I could tell where the problem was just in the body language of the people there. If you were to outline a problem and say, here's, here's what we're thinking, and let's say it's in manufacturing. And if the manufacturing manager is like, well, you know, everybody always wants to point the finger at manufacturing, then you go, okay, yep, this is definitely my problem area. But if the manufacturing person says, you know, we're always interested in learning more about how uh, you know other people do this, how we could increase our efficiencies, things like that, you're good to go. And see, the left, they're not like that. They don't want to learn anything new. They don't want to understand why Donald Trump can take in a single year without the, the, you know, the legacy good news of Barack Obama inheriting all kinds of problems, inheriting racial problems, inheriting problems with crime, inheriting problems with companies that are running from America. I mean, sucking paper in their tornadic vortex to leave this country because of the tax rate. And and I could go on all the the egregious legislation that's being put in their face of them doing business. And President Trump on a dime says and stops it. I mean, just quick. Did did I do that? (laughs) He just stops it. And suddenly. Boom, we're saving Carrier. Boom, we're bringing IBM back. Boom, Ford's not leaving. Boom, GM says they're building. that. Two J- Japanese manufacturers, Nissan and Honda, says, boom, we're building plants in America. Alibaba, SoftBank, all these companies coming back. Dow Chemical, U.S. Steel, you name it, coming back. Apple Computer and, and many others. Wells Fargo giving out bonuses and stuff. This did not happen in the era of Obama and it never was going to. And the left know it. What can Maxine Waters, Mad Max, possibly say to the year that was and the year that will be? It's already starting to happen. What could that chick say? Where, what leg does she have to stand on? But she's going to deliver the State of the Union for the left And let me tell you what that signifies, people. The most desperate left on the planet. They got nothing. What is she going to say? Well, Donald Trump may have done a good job of black people uh, in in black unemployment. That does not mean anything. anything. Uh What are you? I mean, what could she? I'm just curious. You tell me what could she say? We'll learn later. We're going to learn tonight. What is Maxine Waters going to do? Trump's one of his most vocal critics. And do you think Maxine, wh- wh- I'm guessing, do the left believe that Maxine Waters is going to reach more black people? This is the worst gambit. I mean, outside of trying to make the Russians collusion between Donald Trump, this may be the second worst gambit of the Democrats because the, the Russian collusion thing is gone. I mean, it's over. Oh, he obstructed justice. He might have wanted to fire Mueller. That was the next thing they did. He might have wanted to fire Mueller. That would have been obstructive of justice, obstruction of justice. Uh, Maybe had he done it, but no, even if he had done it, it is an obstruction of justice, but it's certainly not obstruction if he didn't do it. That's the level of desperation these clowns have. Wow. Maxine Waters. Good luck with that, Democrats. Black people are going to start loving Donald Trump. I'm going to give you some numbers. You, they're in trouble. We come back, we discuss that picture of Barack Obama. I did. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS or state? 
The secret to avoiding the IRS nightmare is to seek professional representation. My friends at Security Tax Associates provide the most cost-effective and ethical representation in the industry while helping to avoid seizures, levies, and wage garnishments. Security Tax Associates is here to ensure that the appropriate steps are taken to permanently eliminate any possibility of future tax burdens once and for all. For a free, no-obligation consultation, contact Security Tax Associates, 844-779-4177. That's 844-779-4177. 844-779-4177. Or visit them at securitytaxassociates.com. Beth Cook Moranville author of Closer Than Your Breath, A Book of Hope. Hope, that wonderful, wonderful four-letter word that you may feel completely out of. I wrote this book to give you great hope. It's not too late. If fetal position is an all-too-familiar place for you, I understand. If the next 60 seconds are too long, this book is for you. Wherever you are right now, whether you're dealing with divorce or death or sickness, take hope. You are going to make it through this pain. Don't roll your eyes. I've walked this road and I know it. The best is yet to come. Closer Than Your Breath, a book of hope from author and speaker Beth Cook Moranville can be found on Amazon.com or Kindle.com. For more information, visit CloserThanYourBreath.com or on Facebook at Closer Than Your Breath. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Welcome back, everybody. Kevin Jackson here. So there was a picture that surfaced about Barack Obama, and it showed him with the uh, with Louis Farrakhan and with the congressional black circus clowns, a few of them. And my curiosity is, what would have happened had that picture been shown? Now, look, the speculation doesn't matter because it is what it is. They, I believe, Barack Obama wouldn't have been elected president. I think a lot of the whites that. Uh, certainly from the conservative side who were giving him the benefit of the doubt and thinking he was going to bring racial conciliation it would have abandoned him. I think a lot of leftists would have thought, uh Oh, not exactly what we want. And so it, it would have, wouldn't have happened. So for whatever reason, God saw it in his providence to say, let's not, let's go ahead and let him be president. And I think at the end, it, it, it ends up benefiting us because we know what happened with all of the seats they lost and so on and so forth. And the Democrats are in big trouble going forward. Their name is going to be sullied. And it's going to take the efforts of people like us to continually do these things, to push these messages out. I was at an event uh, at a a fundraiser and we were talking about Tom Fitton and and a couple of big dollar donors said, oh, I always donate to Tom. He does such great work. And Tom does a good work when he gets these uh, FOIA requests and and. uh, you know, exposes these guys, these Democrats for the cockroaches that they are. But there are other people out there doing things that are just as important. And so Tom can expose that they hid messages and things like that. But there's still a big marketing campaign through the media that allows the message of Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama to still seem plausible. Like, oh, they aren't bad people. They are bad people. And it needs to be exposed. But we're not doing that for some reason. And we've got to do a better job of that. So I hope that, you know, I mean, my, this year for us, we, we are a marketing arm for the conservative movement. We're going to push out these messages about Hillary Clinton and the, the, the Democrats, Debbie Washington Schultz, Pelosi, uh, Adam Schiff, McCabe and the FBI, James Comey, Mueller, all of them. We're, it's just con- going to be a constant barrage of these people are crooked and getting that circulating so people can understand it. That's one of our, one of our missions because without that, we end up in big trouble. Now I want to go back to this, this picture. So the picture was withheld. I think that's the bigger story, right? The idea that 
the guy that took the picture knew potentially this is what I heard. I don't know much about it, but because it wasn't like an official White House picture or anything like that. He wasn't elected. But I'm told that Barack Obama knew of the picture and said, now, look, this picture can't come out. Or maybe it was the author of the picture, the photographer who said, you know, I know what this picture could do and I don't want to release it. And the reason why I find this to be very important is that if you can't showcase a person fully, you're lying about him. Now, we know Barack Obama's past is a lie. His ability as a president, everything this man has done has been fabricated. I mean, Barack Obama oversaw the worst, one of the worst, probably the worst economic period in American history. And it's ignored because they, they they want to tell you, oh, well, he look at what he did for the stock market. Donald Trump's doing real, real things for the stock market. Barack Obama printed a trillion dollars a year and grew the debt of America by ten trillion dollars. I want you to think about ten trillion dollars. That's 15 zeros. You to be a billionaire, a billionaire could give a thousand people a million dollars. OK, a trillionaire can give a million people a million dollars. Think about that. A million people get a million dollars for a trillionaire. So when you think about the scale of that, strip it back a little bit and just say one trillion dollars and you can give a million people a million dollars. So you can give 10 million people a hundred thousand dollars. Now, I want you to think about America's poor, poor families. Barack Obama could have given, could have given 10 million people $100,000 for the last eight years. Just giving it to them. Ask yourself what that would have done for the economy. This is what we're talking about. We're talking about a guy who artificially I mean, there's nothing Obama did that you can go. That's a permanent fix. Everything was artificial. He grew welfare, 16 million people. He faked the unemployment numbers by, t- by having the most people not looking for work, the, the least amount of workers in America. I don't know if in history, but certainly in a long time. Lowered our credit. I could go on. And, and the only thing that propped him up was his ability to print money, a counterfeiter, no better fitting (laughs) definition. I mean, when you think about what he did, a counterfeiter, that's exactly what he represented to this country and the left love him. And, but here's the, the dirty little secret. They really don't. They really don't love him. And that's why Barack Obama held that picture. They didn't want you to know the truth about him. They didn't want you to know he was black centric. And look, if, if Barack Obama had told people, you know what, uh, when I get in here, I know you guys are expecting me to be this, uh, you know, bridge the divide between black and white, which quite frankly didn't really exist as much as it did in the past. But if he had said, you know what, I'm going to make my presidency about you know, it's going to be black centric. I'm going to be. Uh, focused on black issues. I'm not going to help them, but I'm going to give them the per- perceived help. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to make them feel small. I'm going to make them feel less than what they are. That's how I'm going to do it. He wouldn't have been elected. I don't really care because it's over. But I just find it incredible that the left hang on to this. They want the, that. They really want this man to be canonized. They, the, with, you know, the, the library that's being built where he's got nothing of himself in there. He, he, none of his past, none of his records are actually in there. Can you imagine if Donald Trump did a, li- a library and he said, you know, I'm not going to put any of my writings. I'm not going to put my, you know, the things that record me that none of that's going to be in there. Um, I can't even imagine the outcry. What's he hiding, man? 
You know, we could be asking what, well, we still are. What is Barack Obama hiding? Barack Obama in his presidential library, you will not be able to find his grades. I'm talking about high school grades. You won't be able to find his college transcripts. You won't be able to find the writings that he did in college, out of college, whatever. There will be no physical stuff. There'll be some digital things of his legislation and his speeches and all that crap. But there's not going to be anything there that will tell you more about him. He wants to remain a secret even after his presidency. That should tell you a lot. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Bad news for leftist men. Oh, yeah. Welcome to the Kevin Jackson Show, everybody. KJRadio.com, 844 551 What a topic. What a topic. Cyborgs, robots. When, you know, I've seen all the sci fi films, you know, Terminator is obviously kind of set the, the stage for the cyborg. I mean, there were others, but Terminator. I mean, forget R2-D2, right? He just rolled around on stuff. And even, uh, what was it R2-D2? C-3PO. I forget which one, but there was the robot that walked all robotic and he was all, you know, glistening. He was like, looked like he was a uh, chrome. That's nothing in comparison to Terminator. Shut up, George Lucas. Don't even try it. Terminator was the man. I mean, you know, I'm a... Human flesh over bloody cup, blah, 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 skeleton, exoskeleton, whatever. So, and the dude had a little eye that blah, 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 made all the calculations and stuff. Give me your pants. Give me your clothes. Remember that? Then he took the dude's clothes, took his motorcycle, and boom, he was off to the races trying to kill Sarah Connor. So, but cyborgs, it was something else. So then they did the next one, the second one, which is another dude. I forget the guy's name. Then they did the third one who was a woman and she was hot. That's what the robots have become. I'm, you used to think of robots as like, you know, he's putting welding things in Chrysler, you know, at some auto factory or whatever, or the robots. in. at least I do, because I'm I come from, you know, background of engineering. So you got pick and place equipment and you program it in and it knows exactly where to place all the little pieces and parts. And it's become so sophisticated. I'll look at it today and go, seriously, that's the size of surface mount elements now. You know, they can handle that kind of current. The substrates have changed all the different things that from when I was coming up in engineering. I feel like I'd be over there. They like, look at old great grandpa over there still talking about. Yeah, well, we were using gallium arsenide. (laughs) You know, they're like gallium arsenide. That's so like your 1990s. (laughs) And I'm, you know, it was cutting edge when I was leaving. So you got all, and, and I remember we would talk about, you know, this many microns of, of epitaxial layer and all that. And sh- now they're probably like, man, shut up, grandpa, get out of here, it's your old self. But, you know, so things have changed. And I remember you guys will find this really funny. The toughest thing to do when I was in robotics class, when I, you know, learning about how to design robots was they said getting a robot to walk was a very difficult thing because you know what what looks easy to us because we just automatically center you couldn't do it with a robot well now the gyros and all the different things now the technology is such that robots walking no we do robots run now they can run do you see the robot that does a standing back flip and front flip just yeah and I don't know what it weighs, probably a couple hundred pounds, but it does these flips. Well, that's the technology. Now he looks like a robot. He's got, he's not, he doesn't have no, uh, no, he doesn't have any, uh, like human look, look, you know, looks to it. Oh, you know what? The other robot movie, as I think about it was alien. Remember the guy cut his finger and he, he had white blood and Sigourney Weaver goes, she didn't tell me we was on with her. And she called him something. And, because the in the previous movie the guy tried the the robot dude tried to kill her, so 
she was mad that she was on with this other guy. And he and the guy, forget his name, but you know him and you see him as an actor. But he goes, oh, that was an old model. He goes, my uh, my algorithms are much better and I would never hurt you or whatever. It didn't help her. She didn't believe it. But he at least said, no, I was an old model that tried to kill you. The new one's OK. And you could in the movie, you obviously couldn't tell he was human. But, you know, there you go. And then there was Blade Runner. Where, you know, these they put a certain amount of time on your life because these uh these these machines, whatever they you know, these hybrids would uh they were so much stronger and you know, so much smarter and all that, they had to put a, a limit on them or else they would take over for man. I'm just thinking about robot films. But now they got robots not just for manufacturing, not, you know, to uh you know, I mean, they got them. They're probably looking at them for warriors and things like that. I mean, I don't know. How long will a robot last? Can it run on solar energy? Wait till you we find some sort of nuclear pellet where something can, can you know, really survive a long time. Whoa, it's going to change dramatically. But now I've talked about this before, but this is a different subject about it. But the sex robot industry, I'm telling you, folks, y'all think I'm kidding, is going to be big. It is. I When I was doing this story... Looking at what we're going to write about and obviously talk about, I just said I Googled sex bots and you got to be careful because you get a lot of crap when anytime you put sex in anything on the Internet. But it went right to these pages. And I mean, the minute you see them, you're like, boop, because I went Google images. It, you're like, wow. I mean, they, you still recognize them as dolls, but give it a decade, give it a decade and you may come home to the hottest robot. It's going to be dudes talking about. Pull, y'all think I'm kidding. They're going to be pulling up pictures on their phone going, have you checked out my latest model here? Check it out. Oh, showing pictures of their robots, not their girlfriends, not their wives, their robots, their sex bots. And think about it. You can program your sex bot. This story, I'm telling you, it. wait till I get, so let me get into it. Because the bad news is they can be hijacked by hackers and used to harm or even kill people. That's what a cybersecurity expert warned. So there's the bad news. There is a downside. <laughs> but fellas, okay, I'm going to put this out there for the leftist fellas because they're out here listening. They need to know. They're like, I like Kevin Jackson. He he explains things pretty well. I want to be part of his team. So I, I'm, I appreciate you guys coming over. Here's what I want to tell you. That's the downside. The good side is you don't have to deal with a liberal woman. Yeah, you get to be total man, alpha dog for a chance, you, for a change. You don't have to deal with that whiny, harpy, just blah, 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 emasculating, one, you know, whatever, because you can't call her a woman. No, one, no Who knows what she professes to be to that day. So you don't have to deal with her. You get yourself a sex bot. Yeah. Artificial intelligence researchers have consistently warned of the security risk posed by Internet connected robots, with 700 recently calling on governments to ban weaponized weaponized robots. You know, they have robots. You've seen the movie. What was it called? Uh, uh, Robocop, uh, where the 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 rope, the rope, the uh, weaponized robots ended up killing everybody in the room. That was a, that was a terrible scene. Wow. You got to see, even if you don't like the movie, it was an interesting scene. So, but they don't want to weaponize them because a robot, you know, he, he, he's the, he, you can't sue a robot. If he shoots you, Michael Brown, you know what I mean? If you're trying to resist the robot and he, and he's strong and he's like, Oh, threat, threat, threat. And there's no black lives matter. So y'all left him out there for four hours. Oh my God. Oh, he for four hours. Robot says threat. Stole cigarettes. Approaching. Stop where you... Oh, you don't want to stop, Negro. Shoots him, right? Anyway, apparently hackers take control of these fembots. They can then maneuver the arms and the legs and other attached tools. In some cases, even knives, they say. Or welding devices. Can you imagine you are in your intimate moment with your robot... And suddenly she's welding your buns, welding your butt cheeks together. Wow. Maybe with some hot solder. That would hurt. So, yeah, they they're concerned about this because apparently people are really buying these. Uh, Now, I want the story we did about this a while back was 
they were saying, should they make sex robots for pedophiles? Like as in little baby, you know, little kiddo robots. I'm going to tell you, I have a problem even with somebody, you know, trying to have sex with a kid robot. There's just something even wrong with that to me mentally. That's a whole story for another day. But one of the guys that when I was look, looking at the story, he said, why don't you just send these robots to the Middle East? And then allow hackers access. <laughs> but anyway, if you're thinking you're sending these, these fembots to their doom, if you send them over to uh, these goat humpers, these babes are not like whiny feminist human sisters. No, they are brawny. Here's what Newsweek said. Often these robots can be up to 200 pounds and very strong. Once a robot is hacked, the hacker has full control and can issue instructions to the robot. The last thing you want is for a hacker to have control over one of these robots. Once hacked, they can absolutely be used to perform physical actions for an adventurous scenario or, I'm sorry, for an advantageous scenario or to cause damage. Now, I'm just trying to imagine one of these fembots with some of the religion of peace insurgents head between her thighs and some hacker pushes crack the coconut on his control panel and just, you know, that's the end of that. Now, this has already happened with the, and you're going to think I'm joking, the Bluetooth enabled butt plug. Yes, it does exist. People will think I'm kidding. Researchers discovered a security flaw in the Bluetooth enabled butt plug if you don't think leftists are crazy think again Kevin Jackson on the Black Sphere Radio Network do you owe back taxes to the IRS or state the secret to avoiding the IRS nightmare is to seek professional representation my friends at Security Tax Associates provide the most cost effective and ethical representation in the industry while helping to avoid seizures levies and wage garnishments Security Tax Associates is here to ensure that the appropriate steps are taken to permanently eliminate any possibility of future tax burdens once and for all. For a free, no-obligation consultation, contact Security Tax Associates, 844-779-4177. That's 844-779-4177. 844-779-4177 or visit them at securitytaxassociates.com. to identity politics. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. What's up, everybody? Kevin Jackson here. KJRadio.com. I am a proud supporter of the military. And I went to military school, Marine Military Academy, have friends in the service, all branches, have worked with all the branches of the service, particularly the Special Forces and Navy SEALs, uh, MARCOM, these guys, a lot of these guys. JSOC, some others, and in different capacities, mostly in hand to hand combat, you know, teaching hand to hand combat. And many of these, and the way I got started with this is I'd have like a couple of the SEALs came out, uh, would get out of, out of a training, I mean, retire, if you will. And then they would come, they, for whatever reason, they wanted to fight, you know, wanted to do mixed martial arts or whatever. So I started training a couple, got involved in it. This is years ago and just kind of got into that community. And keep in mind, had SEAL friends and people long before that, mostly uh, Green Berets, believe it or not. And, um, and again, these are friends. A lot of these are just guys I went to school with that went into the service. I didn't. And, but we kept in touch, so I'd see them and, you know, end up hanging out with them, go out and visit them, Levi's one in particular, uh, go out and visit them at, the, at, at their homes or where they're uh, at the base and end up just meeting other guys and getting into that whole thing. So that's how it all kind of came to be years ago, years ago. And um, but, you know, my upbringing being raised in the country on a big cattle ranch and having gone to military school. I know what hard work is and I know that what you do means something in both of those environments on the country in the country. 
if you don't do your chore, something dr- dramatic is going to happen throughout the day. You got to milk the cows. You got to feed them. You got to, you know, uh, clean stalls. You got to do all that stuff. That's what you do. That's what you grow up doing. You got to make sure there's going to be hay there and or you're bailing it and then putting it away. And, you know, you got to make sure the horses are shooed and so on and so forth. So that's just the way it is. And in the military, if you don't do your part somewhere down the line, something dramatic happens. Uh, it's accountability. And I think that's what taught it to me anyway, was y- if you don't do your part, it will be found out and it won't be you can blame somebody else. You're going to be blamed. They're going to find out it was you because of the chain of command. And you are the one who's going to have to pay. Anyway, uh, the truth gets out, though about the people nowadays who are anti-military, which are the left. And it's lucky for us that the very platforms that these guys give us access to, social media, comes back to bite them. Now, let me explain conservatism. I've, to, I've explained it before, but there are newbies that listen all the time. We picked up a couple of new stations, and I'm glad. Thank, thank you guys for the PDs for, for, uh, for bringing us on. But for the newbies, I'm going to tell you this. Conservatives are ideologues for truth as opposed to leftists who are ideologues for their cause. They don't care about truth. They care about the narrative. The left are minions who do or say what elitists have trained them to do or say, which is why they lie, cheat, and often get themselves in trouble in one form or another. And the, these morons actually start to believe their lies because that's what a moron is. A moron is somebody who, who can't comprehend, who doesn't understand. So somebody says, this is the way it is. Hey, if you step on a crack, you break your mother's back. And you know, that moron won't try to step on a crack. I know. Cause I was one of them. I remember hearing that and I would walk on the sidewalk like an idiot, making sure I didn't step on a crack because my dead mother might get her back broken. Now see, that's moronic behavior. Born of a su- a silly notion, a superstition that has no-, no basis in reality. See, that's a moron. And I can admit that I was one. You know, sometimes from time to time I can, can put on the moron hat, as we all can. But generally speaking, when it comes to politics and the things that have to do with other people and impacting them, I am far from it. In fact, I am a genius because I go back to what I said a second ago. Conservatives are ideologues for the truth. Anyway, uh, one moron is a high school teacher. His name name is Gregory Salcedo. Democrat councilman in the town of Pico Rivera. And he told his Pico Rivera high school students that U.S. Marines are a bunch of dumb craps. I'll clean it up. And the lowest of the low. Now, he was talking about the military in general, but what triggered him was a girl wearing a U.S. Marine shirt. Uh, uh, what do they call it? Uh, sweat, sweat top. Marines, one of America's premier fighting force. People who took down the Muslims at Tripoli from the halls of Montezuma to the shores. Of, oh, you know, you know. The song. So the sight of this sweater, this whatever you call it, worn by a student, triggers Salcedo into a shocking rant. And one of the mothers of a student at the school, her name is Kimberly Flauto, she posted videos of the rant and said, help make this viral. And you know what we did? Help make this viral. Why does this guy, and I don't get this, I do not understand the left when it comes to the military. Look, I'm, and it's one of these things where I'm not some military ideologue that says, oh, no, the military never does anything wrong. No, there are bad people in the military. Generally leftist leftists will enter into a sacred institution of conservatism and they will ruin it. That's what they've done. Education is a sacred institution of conservatism. And you know what it is now? It is a putrid, disgusting uh, remnant of what it once was. It doesn't teach. It indoctrinates. 
Education is not about teaching your kids something and finding the genius inside of them. No, no longer. It is strictly how do we sell our stupid narrative? And for example, the anti-war narrative. Where do you think that's sold? Anti-military narrative. We, I, I, I don't know about you guys. I'm anti-war. I wouldn't want to see any of my kids go to war. I don't think you would want to see your kids go to war or grandkids. But if they have to, you want to know that the nation, when the nation calls upon them, they're ready to go because they understand what it means. Let me ask you this question question this way. Do you believe in any of these putzes that Salcedo and many of these other left teachers, leftist teachers, do you think their kids are going to go to war to fight for them? This millennial generation? You got to be out of your mind if you believe that. But more so, do you want them protecting you? Wow. So uh, I I suspected that this guy probably lost his wife or a girlfriend to a man in uniform. Because you, why would you say this? Look, I don't know what caused this idiot to say such vile things about the military. But the fact that he's a Democrat explains a lot. Remember the Congressional Black Circus Clown Frederica Wilson supposedly stood up for the wife of a veteran who had been snubbed by President Trump. This is a gold star wife. The president calls this young black woman. And Frederica Wilson says that Donald Trump snubbed her, didn't know who her husband was and all this other stuff. Let me tell you something that had to be the biggest lie one of the biggest lies told by the Democrats in the year 2017. Unbelievable. Donald Trump has a dossier of information about every phone call he makes. And the fact that he made that call should have been thrilling to that young black woman. Unbelievable. But uh, Frederica Wilson was ready to use that slain serviceman in order to get political points and then trick this young black woman into doing something that no person should do when they get a phone call from the president saying, I want to tell you, I'm really sorry for your loss. I'll tell you this. I wouldn't go to the, to the uh, Oval Office to see Barack Obama with his slimy behind. But if he called because somebody in my family died and he genuinely cared and he cared enough to get on the phone call to say, Kevin, I'm sorry, your brother died in combat or whatever. I take that phone call. Anyway, Wilson, as it turns out, voted against every measure that would ensure that the family of of soldiers slain in Afghanistan would receive full death and burial benefits. And she did that in 2013. But she'll tell you she's (laughs) pro-military. And I remember Al Gore in 2000 when he didn't want to let the ballots, the the absentee ballots of the the voters, I forget where they were, but they were in in theater. He didn't want their votes to count because it it could have skewed him being president. He didn't want their votes to count. You want to know why? Because the military votes overwhelmingly Republican. That's why the left hate them slimy people. Remember that name, Salcedo. He won't stop until he's the top-rated radio talk show host in America. What kind of weird competitive freak are you? This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show.